Hi, today we will be reading Draw What You See, The Life and Art of Benny Andrews by Kathleen Benson, illustrated with paintings by Benny Andrews himself. Draw What You See, The Life and Art of Benny Andrews. New Orleans, Louisiana, 2005. When Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, whole families lost their homes. People had to live in camps set up by the government or move miles away to stay with relatives or friends. Children had to go to makeshift schools. The artist, Benny Andrews, traveled from New York City to Louisiana to work with those children. He showed them how to draw pictures of what they had seen to use art to express their feelings about what they had been through. He knew from his own experience how important this kind of self-expression was, and he knew that sometimes it was easier to tell a story with pictures than with words. Do any of your families have any experience with Hurricane Katrina? I know I do. I was a child during Hurricane Katrina, and I could have used help through art. Let's see what this book has to say. Plainview, Georgia, 1933. It's a long time ago. Benny started to draw when he was three years old. Once he started, he never stopped. At first, he made pictures of the world around him. He drew hot suns and red clay and little wood frame houses in the middle of cotton fields that stretched as far as he could see. He drew black people at work in the field. What are some kind of things that you like to draw? I like to draw rainbows. Just about everyone Benny knew worked in the cotton fields on farms owned by white people. Every morning, except Sunday, they reported to white bosses. Benny's mama and daddy had other jobs, too. They had ten children to feed. It's a lot of children. Do y'all have that many brothers and sisters? I only have one brother. <laughs> On Sundays, the family went to church. Benny loved the colorful hats the woman wore. He sang hymns at the top of his voice swaying with the congregation. When the preacher shouted about suffering and justice, Benny made pictures in his mind. Back home, he drew church ladies' hats and the preacher's Bible stories. In grade school, Benny was always the class artist. He copied the comics from the daily newspaper. He drew the stories he heard on the radio and the stars in the movies he went to see in town on Saturdays. After school, Benny worked carrying water to the laborers in the field. At planting and harvest time, he didn't go to school at all. None of the black children in Plainview did because they were needed on the farms. This school year was only about five months long. How would y'all feel about a five month long school year? I would definitely miss y'all. <laughs> At the time they were teenagers, most of Benny's friends went to work in the fields full time. But Benny was miserable there. Every row of crops was the same as every other row. The hot sun beat down through the straw hat on his head. The hoe was heavy in his hands. What do we think a hoe could be? talking about farming. What could a hoe be? What do we use a hoe for? Benny dreamed of leaving. He did not have a clear plan, but he knew the first step was to attend high school. He was glad when his mother made arrangements with her farm's boss, Mr. Will, so he could go. See, he valued education very much. Each day, Benny had to walk three miles to high school and then three miles back home. 
but he knew that there was a bigger world waiting for him beyond the small world of his childhood and that getting an education was the best way to reach it. He wanted to see that world for himself and make pictures of it. What kinds of pictures of the world do you make? Benny graduated from high school and with a scholarship from the local 4-H club, he went to a small college for black students. Then he joined the Air Force and finally got a chance to travel. The Air Force sent him all over the United States, even to Alaska. During that time, he never stopped drawing. Who knows where Alaska is? Is Alaska very close or very far? When Benny's military service was over, the government offered to pay his college tuition. He moved to Chicago to attend art school. It was the biggest city he had ever seen, full of many different kinds of people, towering buildings, and best of all, museums. Benny could spend an entire day looking at art if he wanted. He'd never felt so free. Home was always in his heart, but Plainview, Georgia, and the white bosses, and the black farm workers, and the rows of crops, all the same, were far behind him now. Have y'all been to any interesting museums? I like the Noma in City Park. Benny was inspired by the people around him and people were what he wanted to draw. He especially liked making paintings of the jazz musicians in the city's many clubs and cafes. He loved meeting them and listening to their music and he learned how to show the rhythms of their songs in his artwork. With lots of practice, he became a master at capturing movement on the still canvas. Wow, that sounds hard to do. Then he also made pictures of the ordinary people he saw, like the janitors who worked at his school. He liked to think of himself as a people's painter, and he discovered that sticking pieces of paper and canvas on his pictures made them seem more textured and real. Ooh, so he's coming up with his own kinds of art forms. See how he kind of captures the movement in this picture right here? Very talented. After art school, Benny moved to New York City and became a working artist. He had so many stories to tell. He began to create a series of paintings about his childhood in Georgia. Making several pictures based on the same theme was a whole new way for him to tell stories with his artwork. He painted the people on the streets of Harlem, the happiness and sadness that he saw, and the demonstrations that marked the beginnings of the civil rights movement. This is his time in New York City. Benny fought for equal rights for African Americans, especially artists. He protested against museums and galleries that did not exhibit the work of women and people of color. He formed a group that helped organize exhibitions of artwork by those who were often excluded from the art world. Benny also began to teach, first at a community center and then at a college. He took his students to a prison to teach art to the inmates. He believed that art was for everyone. Have you ever felt excluded? Sometimes I do, but it's really nice when people include you. Benny Andrews worked hard his entire life. All that work paid off. He became a respected artist. His paintings were shown at big museums, art galleries, community centers, and colleges. He made pictures for children's books. Benny's success made him even more determined to help others and to share his love of art with them. He continued to teach people from many different backgrounds to use art to tell their stories and to start, as he did, by drawing what they see. This is a picture of Benny Andrews. So what I liked about this book is that it told the story of a real man who helped save others with art. What did you like about this story? What did you think about Benny Andrews? 
How can we use this book as an art project to draw what we see in the world around us? Thank you for listening.